Nearly 10 months or so now, I switched over from Premiere Pro to DaVinci Resolve, and I'm very glad I made the switch. There's a whole video about it if you wanna watch it, but today we're gonna to be talking about keyframing, and there are some pretty major differences between the two programs. I actually really like how DaVinci Resolve has put keyframing in the workflow in their program. So we're gonna be talking about keyframing, how to do it, how to make smooth looking motion graphics and animations. So if that sounds good to you, buckle up. I got my chai tea here so we can get through this and let's boot up DaVinci Resolve. Okay, so here in DaVinci Resolve, I've made a couple timelines for us to work through so we can learn the basics of keyframing. Now, I have essentially grabbed a text graphic. I've literally added the text keyframes and threw that onto my timeline. If you're wondering how to get there, click effects and all you have to do is search up text. I'm grabbing the basic text and I just clicked and dragged it as simple as that, all right? So something super easy, we're just gonna get rid of that for now. How do we add keyframes in DaVinci Resolve? Where are we looking? Now, we are going to be looking in the inspector panel. If you don't have the inspector panel open, it's in the top right of your software there. Just click it, you can click it on and off. I obviously need it, you need it on if we're gonna keyframe. And where we're gonna find keyframes is all along the side here, all in the inspector panel. So you can see all these different uh, ways we can affect and change our text or footage. Even if I click my footage, you'll see that there's other keyframes there as well for zoom, position, and all those kind of things. But we're gonna be animating our text today. So what I like to do is start where I want the, the, the text or image to end, and I work backwards. It's just easier for me. It's something I find that works. So right now, I don't really like where keyframes is at. We're going to move it. So I'm gonna click and drag X over. I'm gonna click and drag Y up. Seems like a pretty good spot. So how we tell Resolve that we wanna start keyframing is we're gonna click that little keyframe there and wow, it says red, red is good. DaVinci Resolve now knows we wanna animate something. So anytime we make a change now to this text frame, let's say we're gonna change it, we're gonna move it up or down, you see where a keyframe has now created itself. So as long as you're changing things, DaVinci Resolve knows to add a keyframe there. We don't really want that. So we're gonna, if you need to ever reset something, if you're going, oh, I, I messed up, clicking this little, you know, circular area here resets all of your keyframes. No more keyframes are on there. So let's go back. We're gonna move this up or over and up. Cool, we like that. We're gonna keyframe there. Now we're gonna scrub back to the beginning of it and we're gonna go, I'm gonna say zero and zero. And now we see over time, wow, it moves up to the corner. Doesn't look very good, very basic animation, but hey, that's keyframe. You now know how to keyframe, at least in the most basic way in DaVinci Resolve. But we can improve, we can make this look better. Let's say we wanna bounce between, between keyframes because that was one thing I struggled with when I switched over from Premiere Pro to DaVinci Resolve is like, where the heck are my keyframes? I don't know how I can adjust them or move them. So the first way we can do it is if we're looking again in the inspector panel, you see the little arrow next to my uh, keyframe there. We can click between them and we can bounce between our two keyframes. So red means we're sitting on the keyframe uh, or we've activated it obviously. So we know there's two keyframes, one here and one in the beginning. But again, I wanna be able to see where they're at. And that's where these two lower symbols in the corner start. So we're gonna click the second one first. And now we can finally see where my keyframes are at. Big revelation for me when I was first learning how to keyframe in DaVinci, where we can grab, we can move them, uh, our playhead will snap to them, provided that you have uh, snapping turned on. If you don't, just press N or hit this little magnet there. And that way we're now bounced between the keyframes. All is good, we can change the, the, the speed of it because we're making it move in less time. And look, wow, we have faster animation. But again, this doesn't look very good. We want this to look better. So the way we do that is actually by opening up this, and I call this my grid view. Some people call it the spline editor. This is where we can start to smooth out our transitions, smooth out our animations, so stuff starts to look less fully robotic. So I'm gonna zoom in here really quick. These four icons in the top here are gonna become very important for us just here in a second. But let's say we've animated multiple things. We didn't just move it position X or Y, we zoomed in, we affected our pitch, our yaw, whatever it might be. If you see this little arrow down here, we can click it and it comes up with everything you could possibly do this text animating wise. Anything you could keyframe is gonna pop up there. So that's really useful for us if we're dealing with lots of different things. But let's say for example, we're gonna add in here really quick, we zoomed, we zoomed in, we will keyframe that there. Again, this isn't looking very good, but we're just playing around with it. We're gonna turn this back down to one. So we're gonna see over time, it grows and moves to the corner. Now there's a lot more going on down here. If we, if we look a little closer, you can start to see, hey, position X, which if you just click what you're working on, it'll change to that. We can go back to the zoom. 
Big thing with Zoom if you're working with it, as long as this is still clicked, it's not grayed out, uh, you can, they'll, they'll stay balanced together. They'll stay working as one. If you unclick that, you can then adjust your Zoom X and your Zoom Y separately, but I tend to leave it together because I'm very rarely adjusting those two uh, separately. Now, these four here on the top are probably our most important things that we're dealing with. So we're gonna play with position Y here for a second. I'm gonna reset Zoom so it doesn't mess around with anything. This is where we can start to ease in and ease out if you're used to Premiere Pro. What I really like about DaVinci is it gives you these four options and that is it, which is pretty simple to work with. So if you're looking, you don't have to think of it as ease in, ease out anymore. In DaVinci Resolve, you're gonna look at, am I gonna smooth out right? Am I gonna smooth out both sides? Am I gonna smooth out left? Or am I gonna make it go back to straight? So let's say we want to animate this side and we want this to smooth out to the right of it. So we're gonna click this little icon and you can see already that this little thing, we're gonna zoom in right here because it's a tough color to see. With our highlighted, if we click our keyframe, you're gonna see this little handle start to move, which we can now adjust things over and over again, which is really, really great. Um, it's, it helps us smooth things out. And then we want our, to end, we want to ease in, I guess if we're gonna use those terms again, which means we need to ease to the left. And now we see a keyframe. That is the basis of how you start to keyframe and things that you're working with. Now let's say, hey, I don't like how this looks. If you hit the straight, it just corrects it back to our normal ones. And you can drag and highlight your, your keyframes, all those kind of things. Super easy to work with. I would honestly recommend just spending some time in here to make sure everything looks smooth and you really start to play with your different uh, options here to start getting better looking motion graphics. So, Let's go to our next page where I'm, how I'm working with keyframes. And I'm gonna just show you some examples of things I've done to uh, start to animate things to make them look a little bit better. Let's show our first clip. So we're gonna see keyframes is popping up. All right, we're gonna see keyframes moves over and keyframes zooms in from zero. None of these look really good. So we're gonna focus directly on this one right here where it's just coming from the side and, and it's literally we're just changing position X. So again, we're gonna work with our spline editor. We're gonna open that, we're gonna zoom in here. I want this to be obviously significantly smoother, right? So if we wanna ease to the left or ease into it, we're gonna click our icon that shows it's moving to the left. And then if we wanna do uh, affect our position to the right, we're gonna affect that. Now we see we have our little handles up. So to get something that looks really smooth and what I think tends to look pretty good, is you want it to be smooth, fast, and smooth again. So how we do that in our editor is we're gonna take our little point and we're gonna flex that out. So you see how it's gonna ease in and it's gonna speed up there. We're gonna grab our other one, we're gonna do this. And so now we're gonna see if we play this back that it's just like, I like how it, it like gently fades in rather than abruptly stops. That's already looking so much better than what we already had, right? And this is just gonna take some, some playing with it to how it, it suits your fancy. But that's essentially how I ease in, ease out. I make transitions to look smoother. But let's say we don't wanna just work with uh, text. We wanna work with something else. Let's close that. Uh, you can open and close however you want. It doesn't affect anything. Let's say we're working with this nice little keyframe graphic I built. We want this to be animated. Let's stop working with text, let's start to work with images. So again, in our inspector panel, we have all the same options and I want this to kind of uh, go from nothing, blow up and come back down. It's like kind of a pop animation. So we'll work backwards again. Uh, in this, uh, I kind of like where that is set. That seems like a good size for me, which I just change. You can change it wherever you want to be. Let's, let's make it, yeah, sure, that size. We're gonna keyframe it there. Great, success. We're gonna go back to the beginning. We're gonna make this now zero, and we already have something that goes bigger. But again, we want it to kind of pop, not just grow uh, at a, some sort of steady rate. So we're gonna come back down to our spline editor again to adjust things. Now, so it says zoom X, we it, it zoom X because of this chain, it affects both, so we don't have to uh, animate both sides. It works for us flawlessly. So we wanna ease in from the left on that one, which means we're clicking that one and we want it to ease out to the right, so we're gonna click that icon. That's the best way I figured out, it's just lefts and rights. You can just look at the little icon in terms of how it bends in the direction it is. So, we can already see, without me adjusting our splines, wow, that actually looks pretty smooth, but we want that pop. So, what I like to do, if I, you can move, uh, move the whole thing, but we don't really wanna do that right now. We're gonna bring this up a little bit, and we're gonna move this a little bit more over. So, what we are actually doing here 
instead of it just going gently towards it in one steady line or sloping up to it, we're actually gonna go above the value and back down. So it's gonna get a little larger before it shrinks down. So let's see how that looks. That looks pretty good to me, it looks pretty good to me. I think I could do a bit more uh, finagling with it to make sure it started to look a little prettier, but hey, that's essentially how you do a really simple pop animation. Now, before this video gets too incredibly long, that is really what keyframing is. That's it, it's that simple. Uh, hey, I hope you start to keyframe more in DaVinci Resolve. Making custom animations is always fun and something I enjoy doing. Highly recommend it. If you have any questions about something we talked about in this video, whether something wasn't fully explained or you just have a question about keyframing in general, please comment down below. I would love to help out. Uh, I've really spent a lot of time learning this. So that's all I have for you this week. Hey. If you like what you've seen, subscribe to the channel. We talk about different resolve, filmmaking, all those wonderful things. I hope you'll have a wonderful day. Stay hydrated, drink some tea, drink some water, whatever it might be. Chai tea's pretty good. And I'll see you next week.